Okay, last example for class 18, fluid mechanics. And we're going to do an example. This again, I took the example right out of single. Is example 11.6. And we have the effect of a spin on a tennis ball. And so the tennis ball has a mass of 0.125 pounds mass. And you know how much I love pounds mass. Uh, and a diameter of 2.52. And it is hit at... Uh, uh, 45 miles an hour with a backspin of 4,800 RPM. And we're going to determine if the ball will fall or rise under the combined effect of gravity and lift due to spinning shortly after being hit in the air in, of one atmosphere at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So here you go, there's the ball. And here is the chart that we will use, figure uh, 1153 uh, there. Okay. So first things first, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this 4,800 RPM into revolution uh, radians per second. Uh, so multiply by 2 pi radians per revolution, divide by 60 seconds per minute, and get 502.7 radians per second. And then turn the um, speed from 45 miles per hour in by uh, 5280 feet per mile, divide by 3600 seconds per hour, and get 66 feet per second. Um, you can see in the denominator here, this is a non-dimensional, uh, uh, let's say they called it the non-dimensional rate of rotation, right here, right there. Um, so let's get that, one half um, omega d, over V, so that's one half, 502.7, needs to be in radians per second, um, needs to be, the diameter is 5.2, 2.52, excuse me, uh, divide by 12, get in feet per, just get in feet, and then divide by our 66, and that will become dimensionless, and get 0.7997, which is somewhere, let's get this very carefully, somewhere in here, right? So I'm going to guesstimate that that right there is about 0.8. And you can see that's just a little bit above here. So let's give just a little bit of a nod uh, to here and estimate that the lift is approximately 0.21. We are not asked for drag, but we could um, try to approximate this. Remember that um, these are, this is, has to be an estimate because it's really only for a, a um, Reynolds number of uh, what's called 60,000, right? So we should probably check that um, afterwards, but I just didn't have that written down. But that's probably for good measure we should do that. So um, remember that the lift is going to be the lift coefficient times one half rho v squared a. So um, the lift uh, that we should use here, the lift that we're going to find is going to be 0.21 right there times one half. And we'll use the density. I'm going to use um, a bridge gravitational. We'll use slugs. So it's, oops, it's supposed to be 3 to the e to minus 3. That's a slugs per cubic feet because I think pounds mass are a pain. So we're going uh, velocity 66 uh, feet per second, pi over 4, and then to get the area, you know, the frontal area, 2.52 divided by 12. Did I get that right? Yeah. And that's got to be squared to get the area. And we'll get a lift of 0 0.03770 pounds. Okay, well, that doesn't tell us a whole lot um, yet. But let's say um, that we want to uh, compare this to uh, gravity. Let's see. It, it, okay, so it has some lift, um, but that lift is going to be less than the weight. Um, just to be clear, and it's sort of a silliness right here. But when you use pounds mass, you, you want to divide by gravity and then multiply by gravity. I don't know why people do that. I guess what you essentially want to do is you want to make sure that you're... Uh, uh, acknowledging that gravity could be something 
different someplace else, but pounds mass basically equals pounds force at regular gravity. So let's just keep it real and say that the weight is equal to 0.125 pounds, right? And by that we mean the pounds force that we use almost for everything else. So I think slugs are way better to use um, overall, but that's my opinion and it's not shared by everyone. So I'll, I'll acknowledge that I'm being a little opinionated. Um, but here to do this, I think we need to address the uh, dynamics. So let's use an FBD and an IBD. Even though this is a simple problem, this helps us think our way through and not get confused by things. So we have a weight acting down, we have lift acting up, and then we also have an acceleration. And we know because this is less than that, that this is going to be the direction of acceleration in the y direction. So what we can do here is taking the sum of the forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. We'll treat positive as up. We'll say negative weight minus lift is going to be equal to, uh, and we drew it as negative, so let's keep it as negative, mass times acceleration. All right. So uh, the weight is 0.125, and the lift is 0.03770. And the mass is going to be the weight, 0.125 divided by 32.2. That will give us slugs, and we can figure out what the acceleration is. This will help us to kind of quantify what the effect of the lift is going to be. And so we, when we get done with this, we're going to find that it's 22.49 feet per second squared. So where it's going to continue to, it's going to have regular gravity, so it's not going to go upwards, it's going to go downwards, but the gravity is now um, reduced, right? The acceleration that would otherwise be there, this would have been 32.2, um, sort of in an obvious way. Um, but now we have, we see that the gravity, or the excel, I should say, the new downward acceleration is um, actually... Uh, like 69.8% of regular gravity. So that, what will happen there is that could actually, you know, one of the advantages there is that it could really mess with the perception of their opponent, of the other, because they're used to seeing a ball and predicting from their experience have a certain trajectory, but now that trajectory will look different to them. And with a finely uh, uh, tuned athlete that has honed their skills over time, um, that, that will be quite difficult or increasingly difficult to try to predict, uh, to forecast, especially in the, uh, the, the, the fast speeds that um, uh, uh, tennis players work at. So anyway, th this is um, an example of trying to use spin. And this is, once again, remember that this is backspin and that that backspin has having a spin that is uh, creating a, uh, let's see if I'm going to say this the right way. I think I can. Um, remember that they, that the, uh, uh, let's see if I'm going to say this right. This is carrying fluid with it as it spins backwards, right? So I, I'm drawing it the, actually the wrong way, uh, right in here. The velocity is coming this way. So... Yeah, yeah, I don't want to go continue there. It, 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 it's faster on the bottom than it is on the top, the combination of the spin and the velocity. So we have to be kind of careful which way we're, we're saying, uh, we're looking at the thing. It's, uh, uh, but it's going to co combine and make a low pressure zone on the bottom, which is going to increase uh, uh, the lift. All right, so I don't want to play with that. All right, so we're done. Thank you for last one more, uh, uh, one more example. Now I'm going to do a review session, so yay.